welcome to another episode of SCFG Live. Science Club for Girls Live. I'm Hannah with Science Club for Girls, and that was Mr. Music with your theme song. Now, Mr. Music, that looks like a different instrument today. What is that? Hmm. I think it might be a mellophone. Is that right? It's not a mellophone. It's a euphonium. Yay, euphonium. It looks like a small tuba. <laughs> a small tuba. That's why Mr. Music's in charge of the music and not me. Very cool. Well, it's also very loud. We'll see it again at the end of the show. But, all right. Weird. Anyway, I'm so glad that you guys could join us again today for another fabulous episode. And fortunately, Dr. Marbles is not going to be able to join us because he decided he needed to make himself into a snowman. That was his number one priority today, and uh, therefore that is what he is doing. Now, speaking of snow, I'm sure you've taken a look outside today, and you've probably seen that it's snowing. And I actually had a feeling it might snow because when I checked the weather report, it says chance of snow 90%. And we learned in, in last week's episode that the chance of snow being 90% means it's pretty likely to snow because the probability is close to 100%. Last week, we talked about probability being on a scale of 0 to 1 or 0% to 100% of how likely something is to happen. So if something is close to 100%, it's pretty likely to happen. But if it's close to 0%, it's not very likely to happen. So today, there was a 90% chance of snow. And in fact, it was snowing. And there was probably a 0% chance of warm, sunny skies. And there definitely aren't any warm, sunny skies. Rem uh, also last week, we explored probability by playing around with the coin. We found out that we could measure the probability of getting a heads or a tails by using this really cool formula. We found out that if you put the number of possibilities or ways that you could get a heads, which is just one on a coin, there's only one heads, over or divided by the number of outcomes, the potential things that you could get when you flipped a coin, which are either heads or tails, so two, you get the probability of getting a heads, one over two, or 50%. It's right in the middle. We also talked about how probability is kind of like making a prediction, because the probability of something happening is not always what ends up happening. And so we really just need to use probability like a guide instead of using it as this is what's definitely going to happen. Now, we're kind of switching gears today because we're talking about something called augmented reality. Now, this is something that you've probably heard being thrown around a lot because it's a really big deal now, especially when things are on, um, on the computer and, and more virtual. Now, in order to start talking about augmented reality, we need to talk about two things first, and that is the real world and the virtual world. So the real world is what we experience. It's what's around us. It's things that you can reach out and touch and use, like this bottle of water. I can see this bottle of water. I can touch this bottle of water. I can even taste this bottle of water. But there's also something called the virtual world, and that's what we experience on our computers and on our phones. These are things that are not existing in reality and instead are usually computer generated or made on computers. For example, a cute example, this puppy is living in the virtual world right now because I can't reach over and touch that puppy as much as I would like to. Now, we call things in the real world reality and we call things in the virtual world virtual reality. You might have heard this term a lot. And there's actually another term that we use where we kind of combine the two things. We combine the real world and the virtual world and that's called augmented reality. In fact, the word augment means to add. I'll show you a great example of kind of what that's like. Here's a picture of my mom and I. This was taken in the real world. This is reality. It's actually me and it's actually my mom. We're living in one world and this llama holding a camera is living in another world. But I can put this llama on top of this image like so. And now we've kind of combined reality with something that was kind of made up. This is called augmented reality. You're probably pretty familiar with this because if you've ever used apps like Snapchat or Instagram or Zoom, 
you can oftentimes put filters on top of yourself and make yourself into a different world. Like this background right now, this is not what my living room looks like. It's just a made up background. So this is kind of like augmented reality right now. I'm putting something else into my real space. I'll show you an example using Snapchat as well. Let me get my Snapchat set up. It's kind of cool. All right, let me share my screen. All right, watch this. So now you can see what my face looks like in reality on this side of the screen. And on that side of the screen, you can see what my face looks like in augmented reality. This weird, funny glasses and bear thing is being added to my face. And that's kind of what augmented reality is. Pretty cool. You wanna see another cool example? All right, let me show you. Now, if you go into Google, so if you have a phone at home, you can do this, and you type in the word dog, it will actually bring up some augmented reality and bring up actually a dog on your screen. Watch this. So here's my computer and there's a dog. Now this is not a real dog, look, blah, 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 but it's like augmented reality. Something virtual is being added into my real world. And he's so cute. Aw, bye dog. Pretty neat. Now, you might also be familiar with augmented reality because there are things like uh, augmented reality glasses, which actually put virtual images in your real world, in your vision. And those look something like this. Take a look. Cool. So what happens is basically these glasses kind of project an image into your reality and you're able to kind of see something that's not actually there. This is augmented reality. Now, you can also do some pretty cool things with augmented reality um, that are pretty simple. And these are called holograms. Holograms are images that are basically made by using lights. And you don't even need to use like any cool glasses or anything at all, just lights. And today, we're actually gonna have a chance to make our own hologram. It's kind of spooky and kind of in the season of Halloween. So I'll show you what you need for this. Now for this experiment, you are gonna need an adult's help because we will be using candles. So you wanna make sure that an adult is around um, just because it's, it's safe to do that. All right, so for this experiment, you're going to need two candles. The smaller the candle, the better, and you want them to be similar shape and similar size. You'll wanna match, you can use a lighter or you can also use um, a matchstick. And you'll also want something clear. This can be plastic, like this plastic lid, or you can use a sheet of glass as well. If you can't find a sheet of glass, a good way to find one is usually in frames. You can actually have the sheet of glass right there on the top. All right, I'm gonna split, uh, change my camera so you can see this at a better angle. All right, so first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna place two candles like so. You wanna place them right next to each other, forward and back. Okay, so, I'm going to place this glass, actually, not yet. The first thing you're gonna do is you're going to light one of the candles. I'm gonna light the candle in the front. Again, make sure you have an adult's help for this part. All right, so this candle is now lit and this candle is not lit, but using the help of some light and some holograms, I'm going to make this candle lit. Let's take a look. Do you see that? So again, this candle is lit and this candle is not, but it looks like it's lit, right? There. Whoa, it's kind of like a ghost. Not lit, lit. Not lit, lit. So cool. So what's happening here? How is this working? How am I seeing a flame where there's no flame at all? Let's talk about it. Blow out your candle first because safety is important. All right, so what's going on here? Well, there are two ways that you can kind of use a sheet of glass or a sheet of plastic. One is that you can look through it. It's transparent. Transparent means that you can look through something, right? I can see my hand on the other side. I can see my face on the other side, but we can also use this kind of like a mirror. So instead of just being able to look through it, 
this can also reflect light back. And that's exactly what's happening here. So when the candle was lit, the light from the candle flame was hitting our clear plastic and bouncing back at you, making it look like the candle in the back here was also lit. Pretty cool. So again, simple, simple things can create something pretty complex, like augmented reality, making us think that something's there when it's really not in reality. Very cool. All right, now there's so many cool things that you can do with augmented reality, and there's so many ways that it can help people. Now, to take a closer look at other ways that it can help people, one of our good friends, Julie, was able to sit down with an augmented reality specialist, Dr. Kate Donovan, to learn a bit more about how this works and how she uses augmented reality in the hospital, which is kind of cool. So let's take a look and hear their conversation. Uh, hi, Kate. Could you please introduce yourself to the Science Buffer Girls? Sure. My name is Kate Donovan. I'm the Clinical Director of Innovation for the Department of Pediatrics, the Innovation Digital Health Accelerator in the Simulation Program at Boston Children's Hospital. And I do a lot in the area of XR, which includes augmented reality and virtual reality. Can you tell us a bit more about what a typical day in the hospital would be like for you in your job? Yeah. So a typical day in the hospital, a lot of times it's, it's kind of all over the place in a hospital environment because things can change at every minute something new could be happening in the hospital. But when you're using augmented reality and virtual reality, some of that can be used for pain management with patients and even family members for distraction for patients going through hard procedures. Um, it can also be used for educational purposes, for staff, for again, patients and families. So there's so many ways that we can use some of these technologies. So not only do I use it with patients, families, and clinicians, but I also love creating this. So I create a, a lot of these experiences myself in the lab in the simulation program at Boston Children's. So that makes it lots of fun because I can use all my creative juices to make things. Oh, how did you become interested in augmented reality and virtual reality? Well, to be honest with you, I was just curious about it. I kept hearing everything about it, so I decided to jump in and explore it a little bit more. It kind of marries my love for gaming, my love for music and audio, and my love for video, and it marries it all together to create these very cool experiences. So as you can see behind me, I'm a musician. I love to make music and in virtual reality and augmented reality, when you add sound, it's really important to understand how that sound affects the experience that you're seeing. So for instance, if I was going to see an augmented reality heartbeat, so augmented reality heartbeat, very similar to if you found a Pokemon Go character and when he's talking, that you would want to make the sound come from the right place. So using that, that sound design is really important. Using video in a way that, that's telling the story that you want to tell is really important. Um, and then also gamifying it. I am definitely a gamer at heart. So for me, it was this marriage of all the things I love into this one area of expertise, which is very, very cool. And what advice do you have for younger viewers out there who are trying out different fields of science like uh, augmented reality and virtual reality? I always say to anyone I work with is be curious about it because when you're curious and you ask a lot of questions, you can find out more things about it for sure. Um, definitely explore uh, maybe some different apps that are out there. So things like Insight Heart, which I, I was chatting earlier about, which is an app that you can download on your iPad or even your Google phone. You can see the inside of the heart in augmented reality. If you want to explore virtual reality, there's a headset that you can actually make. So Google Cardboard is something you can actually buy a kit for like a dollar to five dollars off of Amazon and put it together and put a smartphone in to experience some virtual reality experiences, which is a cool way to explore it. You can also create virtual reality, virtual reality experiences with your phone. 
um, in augmented reality experiences with your phone. So there's a lot of free things out there that you can explore this space a little bit more. So I would say definitely explore it. I feel like this is definitely something that the future is going to be just open wide if you have an interest in these, for sure. Cool. That was awesome. I'm so glad that we got to hear from Kate. And I think what Kate does is really neat in that she uses augmented reality for more than just gaming. She uses it to actually be able to help patients. And she was actually saying one of the ways that she uses it to help patients is that she'll allow them to kind of figure out where equipment's going to fit in their house before they get sent home. So they can picture how their medical equipment's going to fit in with their everyday life. She also said that she uses augmented reality and virtual reality to help doctors to learn different parts of the body and to be able to see different parts of the body in augmented reality. I want to show you one of those really cool apps that she was talking about now, which is called Insight Heart. So let me go ahead and share my screen so you can see it. And it's a really neat way for doctors and medical students and any student to learn about the heart. So here's my kitchen. I'm going to tap and hold. And there is a person in my kitchen. Oh my gosh. Now, if I want to take a closer look, obviously you can see that each of those parts of the body are labeled. We talked about the brain in a few episodes ago. We can see the brain. We can see the nervous system, which we also talked about a few weeks ago, which helped with reaction time. We see the heart and the lungs and the stomach. And if we actually click on the heart, we can see a closer image of it. If you want to learn more about the heart, you can check out our circulatory system episode. But we can zoom in. We can see how fast the heart is beating, beats per minute, which are at 80. Really cool. And we can see exactly how the heart kind of works. Really neat. Now we can also make it a faster heart rate and see what would happen if someone was to have a like heart disease. It's really cool. That is one of the benefits of augmented reality. Who knew I could have a heart in my very own kitchen? gosh. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I really hope that you take what Kate has to say to heart and really be able to explore and be creative. There's so many different ways that augmented reality can make the world a better place, right? We can use augmented reality to help teach in medicine. We can also use augmented reality to help in the classroom. And I was going to show some pictures. Hold on one second. Do, do, do. We can make, uh, use augmented reality to make things like textbooks come to life, to be able to see what a thing actually looks like in 3D, in three dimensions. We can also use augmented reality, similar how Kate does, to make the waiting room of a hospital a much more fun and safe place for kids by incorporating little characters running around. There's so many different ways that we can use augmented reality, and so I really encourage you to explore and have fun because this is, this is the future, and you are the scientists of the future. So it's great seeing everyone. I can't wait to see you uh, next week for another episode of SDFGO. That is a loud instrument, Mr. Music. Science Club for Girls Live. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.